Welcome to Mind Pump, the number one fitness and health podcast in the world. This is a Q&A episode mm. where we answer questions asked by our audience. But the way we open the episode is we cover current events. We talk about our lives. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. Here's what went down in today's episode. We start out by talking about how we read to our kids. Uh, Justin likes to make up voices and inject uh, poop jokes every once in a while. That's to- my precious. <laughs> then we talked about the uh, Chris Delia uh, comedy uh, special on Netflix. The guy's hilarious. Uh, then I talk about the how I got hammered on YouTube for making funny faces while I worked out. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate that. His own face. Made me feel a little more self-conscious. Uh, I talked about how uh, Trump did a very asshole move and demanded that his name was on the stimulus checks. Narcissism, anyone? Did we expect any less? Yeah. Then we talked about savings and how our purchasing habits uh, might have to change, but it might be a tough pill to swallow. Uh, Justin brought up Ted Kaczynski and serial killers. He wanted to lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that little gasoline. Then I talked about our generation and how this uh, situation might define us for future generations. So we got to think about what we're doing. Uh, we talked about how teenagers are messing up the Netflix algorithm. Adam actually referred to them as teeny boppers. <laughs> yeah, he sounds like he's 70 years old. Yeah, it's an old school term. Uh, then I talked about sleep and COVID. I, I guess a lot of people right now are reporting that their sleep, they're having like really vivid, weird dreams. Like This is apparently natural and normal for people under more stress. Uh, Justin talked about uh, how his kids are using his iPads a lot for school. And that led us to talk about blue light blocking glasses and their value. Now, if you're on a screen a lot, whether it's TV, iPad, or computer, you want to block some of the damaging blue rays that you're getting from those electronics. That can actually cause problems with your eyes, can cause eye strain. In some people, it causes headaches. Um, Also, if you look at electronics right before you go to bed, that can disrupt sleep. Then you put on really strong blue light blocking glasses. Now, Felix Gray is a company that we work with, and they make both. They make the daytime blue light blocking glasses for when you're working during the day, and they make the ones that are stronger that you wear before bed so that your sleep is more productive and deeper, okay? Uh, And because you listen to Mind Pump, we have a link for you. We'll hook you up. Go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump and get hooked up with free shipping and free returns. Then we talked about our friend Jason Phillips and NCI certifications, and they are doing a $1.99 free uh, audio book about how to work on nutrition coaching secrets. In other words, if you're an online coach or thinking about online coaching for $1.99, you get this whole course that's going to help you become a better instructor. Then I talked about New York uh, City reporting the highest amount of deaths that they had in a long time, but that was due to a new way that they're counting. And then we talked about how China Mm. is censoring research. Shocking. Mm. Then we got into answering the questions. The first question, this person's talking about how some trainers are telling them to not squat below 90 degrees because it's dangerous. So we kind of dispel that myth and talk about when squatting below 90 degrees is appropriate and why it can be better. The next question, this person is having trouble staying disciplined. Uh, They're very unmotivated to work out at home, so they want some tips. So we talk about what you can do if you're, like most people, falling into a bit of a rut because you can't go to the gym and things are weird right now. The next question, this person's getting very few steps every day. Uh, Again, this is probably common uh, for a lot of you. And so they wanted some recommendations on what they can do at home to work on mobility and activity. And the final question, this person is having issues with their IT band. They're tight and they're causing pain and they can't seem to get any relief. So they want some mobility answers. So we give them to that uh, in that part of the episode. Also, we pointed to uh, a new site that we have, a new page called Mind Pump Webinar. If you go there, so it's mindpumpwebinar.com, go there. You can sign up and you'll get notified when Adam's uh, class gets uh, posted. So Adam actually did a whole mobility class that he taught taught himself and it's free. All you got to do is register at mindpumpwebinar.com. Also, all month long, uh, Maps Prime and Maps Prime Pro are both 50% off. Now, both of these programs require no exercise equipment. Both of them work heavily on mobility. Maps Prime teaches you how to set up your priming sessions before your workouts. 
MAPS Prime Pro is all about correctional exercise. Now, they can be used individually, but they are also complimentary. Again, no equipment required, and they're both 50% off right now. Here's how you get those programs. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, search for the one you want, and then use the code PRIME50 for the discount. That's P-R-I-M-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. Do you do this, Sal? Like when, when your kids were little, you would kind of read them bedtime stories, but then you take over and kind of, you know, add characters to the different people and like make up like different things, make it funnier or whatever. My kids like are incessant about me making it funnier. Really? Yeah. They won't let me just read a story like that. That's too boring for them. <laughs> so I'm just like, I make up all these different characters and try and give them like accents and uh, you know, obviously the fart, the poop, and you know all that kind of oh, stuff. The, jokes like the, home runs. Those are every the jokes time. that keep coming. That keep, yeah, keep giving. Yeah, you know the yeah. fart jokes. Now, do you have to? Um, and I'm wondering this as a dad right now because I've I've started reading to Max, and that's uh, this. Well, I've been reading to Max for a long time, but he's finally paying attention, right? So that was a big milestone for us, just like literally two and a half, three weeks ago. So he's is now. So the, the routine is this: like we get him ready for his bath. He, he gets his bath as soon as he gets out of his bath. Katrina normally bathes him, although I've been bathing him lately. She normally bathes him and then brings him over to me after she's got him all in his PJs, sits him down between my legs. I, I read him a book, right? And, and I read Oh, that's him. awesome. Yeah. And I was reading, uh, you know, I'm going through like his, all of his books that he has. He's got a ton of books uh, and I'm going through all of them. And then I find one, uh, Little Blue Truck, which is like, I just keep reading that one because that one's like the fun, it's the most fun for me to read because I throw the accents and I do characters. Do you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, it's like a, it's it, I throw like my redneck accent. It's like a total like because it's about trucks. <laughs> yeah, and, see, you do trucks too. and tractors. So yeah, it's like my my redneck uh, yeah. accent when I do it and. Uh, he loves it, and so I just keep reading that one over and over. Yeah, uh, I try other ones, but you know what's funny too? Well, and I guess I never thought about. It. I want to write a children's book now. I have this desire to do it because I feel like it's. Oh, that'd be fun. I don't think it's, it's that hard. A, it's a great market. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like not, it's, yeah, they're, they're not like really deep stories. No, but there is. <laughs> yeah, right. You got to be. You got to have the right. You got to hit the right button in order for it to go. Well, so, yeah, yeah, as I say, some of them are. But I don't. I mean, okay, I know you guys have read "Give a Mouse a Cookie." Mm-hmm. Have you read Give a Mouse a Cookie? No. Yeah. Okay, Give a Mouse a Cookie is a famous one. I remember it. it one. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a big book, but it's terrible. I mean, it's like it doesn't rhyme even and it's the this Yeah, sometimes the book's about the illustrations, sometimes yeah, it's like kind of like funny whatever. I yeah, there was this one about like this this misbehaving koala. And so I was reading it from, you know, the there was this guy who's like the dad or whatever. So I was making him this angry old man, you know, like mm-hmm. and like always like yelling at the the, the koala for misbehaving like Ah, you damn koala! Rah! You know, like and just making it all, like all expressive and everything, but it's just fun because you take it over and you just change the whole story and the narrative and everything by you know adding a character to it. Now, are you are you still reading to your boys, or they they read yeah. on the? Oh, so you are still reading? To well, because they again, this is all part of the distraction they want, and the know? entertainment. They want entertainment. Yeah, they want entertainment. They want to keep it going. From I was upstairs, and now I can kind of drag this on this whole going to bed thing. Like they can like, <laughs> Dad, but you read this. And it's so hilarious and it's great, you know. And totally it like, I'm like, you. all right, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do this. It's Just one time, it's you know? good times, yeah. man. It's good. I enjoy time. it, I yeah. enjoy it. Too, you don't so. anymore, though. Yours are all no, I don't read to them, but we do things like, uh, I'll, I'll get it. We have, I'll get a blanket and I'll put it on the ground. And my, I don't do this with my son now, he's 14, but I'll, my daughter will sit on it and I'll just rip her across the. The, the floor just oh, you know yeah. and then she holds on as hard as she can then i yeah your santa her. sack thing like, yeah I you do that I, I'll, I'll do that and yeah. then with my son now the workouts that we're doing together that's kind of our, our bond that's when that's when he'll start to ask me questions like you know that he normally wouldn't ask when people are around you know what ah. I mean? yeah so you know he'll be lifting weights and he'd be like something, he'll yeah. something like <laughs> hey uh um how do you know when a girl yeah. like you know like likes you you know what I mean? Yeah. Do Love girls it. smell different? Oh, yeah. I watched. That's Chris- a good question. Hey, yeah. speaking you know? of that question, did you guys watch? So, I did you guys watch uh, Chris Delia's uh, Netflix? That's the one we were at. Well, yeah, because I started watching. So was it? it no, it, no, it was the same exact. Uh, so it is. No, that is the show we were at, that, bro. No. Yes, it is. That's he San Jose. That night? That's San Jose. I didn't know that was. He had San the Jose. same shirt on. He had exact same act, and it's the it's the same auditorium. I wonder in. if it was our show or like a different taping of the same place. I unless was unless he's wearing the same clothes every day. He, that was what he wore. I'm sure, I think he I does thought, for I, the for I, the taping. I thought I heard though. I thought I heard him say the city though, and I don't. Think no, it, he was making fun of Boulder. No, no, but I think. Did you watch the whole thing? 
Most of it. Yeah, I think at the, I think at the end they actually tell the city. I, really? I want to say it was yeah. like Atlanta. I remember all like the that. jokes, but it was it was a funny stand up. He did I, a good I, job. Yeah, well, he, he does a, a part that is the and I, I I like I like that comedians. He doesn't do it obviously as much as um, Chappelle. I mean, Chappelle is the master. He's the king. Yeah, he is the master at really challenging uh, the way we think. Right, the yeah. way society is decided. Well, you just don't know what direction he's going. You right. think he's yeah, going you don't, somewhere. You, that's why he's so great. Like, you don't know if he's supporting your thought or he's fucking shitting on it and then before you realize it he just made fun of everybody yeah and he he takes everybody for right which is epic right and so chris did that uh uh, in the stand-up he did uh out with the whole um how do you know somebody wants to see your dick oh i love that one yeah yeah. Yeah, that whole that (laughs) whole like skit that he did was because he's like let's be honest like how do you know for sure for yeah. sure, yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, yeah, what? For sure, without someone actually saying, like, "Hey, I want to see your dick," yeah. and he's yeah. like, "Which only happens once or never in your life." Yeah, yeah. he goes one yeah. time or never in your life, and it's usually a bum that says yeah. it to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me yeah. See yeah. Let's yeah see but you just saying that just what you working me, with? Remind me of that. Like, how do you? How do we know for sure she really likes me? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, dude. Uh, speaking of funny, so YouTube, of course, is the land of the trolls. We all know this, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the land I, of the trolls. Oh man! And I, you know, I don't care what you put up there. I don't care what video you put up there. There's someone is going to say something about you in a, in, in a way that's going to make you be like, oh, right. Yeah. So we, I did the video, the the big arm video. I actually, um, Eli filmed me doing a workout, and then I talked about why I pair certain exercises together, and I. You know, I connected it to a free guide and all that stuff. And Great video. Were they challenging your arm size? No, dude. Oh. No, nothing like that, bro. Okay. So that's why I'm going to ask obvious, you. That's right? why I'm going to ask you guys because yeah. you guys have seen me work out, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I make funny faces when I look? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you do. I did see that Damn comment. it. Yeah, yeah. I, saw that. Damn I do all to everybody does. Yeah, but so stupid. Those are, those are your orgasm faces. Yeah, oh, man. No, it's the same. Not. Yes, they are, yeah. bro. No, they're no. not. Yes, they are. No, it's not, dude. Yes, they are. You can do side by side comparison, like, right before you get a nut. I've done surveys on this one. It's a funny. That's what no, it is, bro. Dude. That's why yeah. you, you get, yeah, you just gave it up. No, dude. I don't bite my lip and make this face. You, yeah, yeah. We're going to call Jessica on this one. That's <laughs> terrible. Wow. Yeah, what's the face you have? I don't want to see it. Though, they were like, like oh, I love Sal's lifting face. Oh, he's got the greatest lifting faces ever. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> now I got to worry about how my face looks. Your, your O face. Yeah. What it looks hey, like. hey, you want to hear some some asshole shit right here? Well, this is, bro, this is, it's. I'm only laughing because if you don't laugh, then what are you going to do, right? This yeah. is like some serious. This is why a lot of people don't like Donald Trump right here. It's a great example of why I don't like him. You know those checks that are going out to people, the stimulus checks? Yeah, yeah. I He's, saw this. He, he, he made them put his name on, in the, I saw, I saw <laughs> on this. the subject. <laughs> what a fuck. Uh, That's the most narcissistic thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't but know. it's consistent. I disagree. I think the most narcissistic thing is what he did yesterday or the day before. Playing a highlight reel of himself at a fucking at a live. Oh, I present. saw that. That was so. <laughs> funny. Oh my god! That's I was so I was bad. dying laughing. It's like that was when like I was at my friend's house and we were reminiscing about high schools and like which one was better, like mine or like whatever. It's stupid. I'm gonna bring out my highlight tape, bro. Oh, yeah. no. Breaks out, makes me watch it. I'm like, yeah. what am I doing right now? I'm watching your high school highlight <laughs> film. Like that was what he oh. did to uh, the news. Now, well, when now whenever did- you bring this stuff up, Doug cringes because you know there's you can't help but divide the audience in half, and the the half that doesn't like him assumes because we're laughing about it that we're supportive of it. And the truth is, you got to laugh. Uh, well, that's what are you it. gonna do? I just I think I think that that people get so they get their panties in such a bunch that we can't have conversations about stuff like this without laughing about the situation. Well, here's the, here's the tr- the truth. Okay, the truth. Is, I know this about us. We we either support or are against actions. Okay, not the person. I know a lot of people are like, yes. no matter what, I love this person. They that's can a do massive anything. distinction. No, so there's things that he's done that I'm like, good job. There's things that he's done that I think you're an asshole. Him making the treasury put his name on the subject title <laughs> is an ass move. That's like a – imagine this. Imagine you're not a Trump supporter. You need the money. Now you're taking a check. You're reminded that yeah. his name, he's the president. Like, oh, you know? <laughs> what are you doing, dude? That's the most narcissistic thing I've ever heard. Now, and, now, I saw – I read a report, which is why I want, I want to clarify this or have you clarify this, is that uh, – because I know there's somebody listening right now that is that's not funny because he did that because there's articles that support this and Doug can pull this up about him writing uh, on the check I uh, saw it actually in um complex, a, complex. Yeah. thank you yeah. complex Com- at a whole, complex yeah <laughs> complex wrote up a had wrote up a whole article like that, that because day. he put his name on it it's going to stall the stimulus that's not checks true. it's not no 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 the treasury uh, said it, 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 it everything exactly on time it didn't stall anything at all 
Well, it's just a follow up because yeah. then he tweet like about like like he didn't want to offend anybody who said not my president, so he's not going to give him a check. Yeah. No, he's no. That was a joke. that was a joke. That uh, was a joke. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Again, this is like you don't know information. You know, like you see his little face and like it was tweeted from him, but it's like it sounds like something he really would tweet. Yeah. Well, the thing you he know? did about the the video that he played where he did his highlight reel that. Is that an asshole thing? That's a politics thing. It was just really- oh, it was a power move. Very sure. smart politics yeah. because he has all these live cameras on him. Yeah. And it, so now if they turn off, they look like they're hiding something. And now he's playing a video about how <laughs> awesome he is and about how shitty the media has treated yeah. him, which is this narrative that he's using. He was giving himself some positive uh, press yeah. in, the, in the midst of everybody else like you know, hammering him. Yeah, so it, it was just politics. And politicians do shit like that all the time. But the check thing is just why- <laughs> why, yeah, yeah. why are you putting your name on the it's almost like he wants it, people to feel it's like comical dude yeah it's his money you know, which is so, it's, anyway, it's really funny which also led me to think about this is that you know it's, this is going to be a, it, this is going to be a very difficult thing to communicate to the country because once things open back up and we all you know go back to work and you know follow precautions but we have to we have to go at some point uh, and the experts will decide when some point we're going to go out into the world and have to work and it's probably going to be before everybody's vaccinated i don't see how any how anything can survive that long right we have to go out and go and work so that means we're going to be exposed to the virus and all that stuff yeah and so uh at some point we're going to be out there we're going to be working we're going to be producing and what are they going to communicate are they going to communicate to people hey look here's the deal the reason why so many of you were in such a bad position without you know without working for four weeks is because you didn't have any savings and you had a lot of debt what we think you should do now is when you go out, go work, be productive, save your money, don't spend too much. But you know what that'll do? They'll never communicate that. Yeah, because that'll that'll then slow down. Yeah, yes. yeah. No, they'll never communicate that because oh, okay. that doesn't stimulate the economy. It doesn't make it look like we're buying more things and we have to produce more things. So oh. there's no way. But that's the right message. It is the right. That's me the right long term message. Well, I mean, that was what that was what Peter Schiff was trying to explain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that, and and I think you. Uh, did a good job on the lot. Well, I think it was the last intro that we did of explaining uh, and relating also to fitness and what we mm -hmm. do. Uh, that you know he may not be the best communicator, right? Like he's, he, I mean, he's, but he said a lot of truths that fucking sting, and it and it came off the same way probably. So the people that didn't like it and were turned off by it are probably the same people that would be get turned off if I was sitting in front of him. I said, hey, listen, you're fat. We need to lose that. You know, so that's a bad way to tell a client. <laughs> yeah, it's like abrasive. Yeah, yeah it is. You're just not going to help them. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's true or not. Right, I'm right, saying, right. Even if it's yeah. true, it's- a, There's a, a better delivery. There's yeah, a better it's a, way to do it's it. It's a very, exactly. It's just not going to be well received by a lot of people. Now, there's some people that are very self-aware and they're like, yeah, I needed to hear that. I am, I know, mm -hmm. and I'm going to work on that, right? So there's definitely a percentage of people that listened to his episode and went, fuck, man, right. that was a reality check. That is right. We should be. We should have enough in our savings to handle two or three months of not being able of to emergency. Work. Right, right. So you know, shame on me or whatever. There's some self aware people that'll take it that way. But then there's a lot of people that will be turned off by it because it stings. But mm -hmm. yeah. the truth is, it's it is the truth. Well, that's what it, I mean. A better way than to uh, present it. What a what a you know. Imagine this. Imagine you are the 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 president or a spokesperson for you know, and you're trying to tell people what to do. And you know the right, the real, true, long-term answer is like, hey, everybody, go back to work, work hard, be brave, take precautions, and save your money. Mm -hmm. Save your money because we're so far, you know, everybody, so many people carry so much debt that if something like this happens again, if there's another spike in infections and your town, your city, your state needs to quarantine people, you need to be able to survive with, without working for a month or two. Uh, but know that if you tell people that and they start doing that, you know, people are going to buy less products. We're going to mm -hmm. see drops in, in sales and production, and you're going to start to see this market correction. What a weird, difficult position to be in, you yeah. know, because it'll hurt you if everybody does save. It'll hurt you politically. It'll look bad. You know? So I have a an interesting theory. This has nothing to do with like COVID and all this kind of stuff like going on right now. This is like about serial killers. Okay. Mm. Stay with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, we've, we've been watching the Unabomber in his own words, and uh, I know this is something that's, I guess it's been out since this year, but I just started watching on Netflix, and this sparked a conversation with me and, and Courtney, and she's like, uh, I don't know why she's so like just drawn to any kind of murder, mayhem, whatever that's happened. Like her, her favorite podcasts are the ones that like talk about all the old crazy murders people have done, you know, all over the US, Dang. and I'm just like, 
Oh, and you're bringing that home, and you're in the, you know, and you're wondering why you're not getting great sleep. But uh, anyway, so She's all, Justin, can you dress up, can you dress up as a serial killer? Can you killer lock tonight? it? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. I'll have to give that a go. Uh, but uh, <laughs> hi, honey. Ah! Yeah. Um, oh my god. Yeah. Oh no. yeah. I don't oh know. I, I don't know how, how happy I would be if she was okay with that and she was I turned know, on. Right? I, I'd be a little weirded out if she was like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how do I explain this to the authorities? Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, back to, to my point. Basically, we were thinking about what... The, the, okay, so in the 70s, there was a lot of serial killers that kind of sprung out of nowhere, yeah. right? Yep. And and if you take it back, like, in, in the 40s, 50s, like, Courtney was actually telling me that back then, um, infants, they didn't think that infants felt pain. And so they would, like, perform surgeries... And everything without anesthesia, and they would just give him mild like muscle relaxants and things like that. And then this this was carried on in the medical profession till like the eighties. Mm. So like they they would perform operations and things on these like little infants. So why I bring that up is because in in the um, documentary with the Unabomber, he was talk uh, the brother I think was talking about his conversation with his mom, where his mom was saying, "I think he's this way." Because when uh, he was real little and he was like an infant, got really sick. And so they, they sent him off to, uh, you know, the hospital. But they would not let the parents come visit. And nobody visit and just left them there. Oh, and so wow. and so for like a couple weeks. And then when they came back and they picked him up and they got reintroduced, he would not look at them in the eye. He was always looking off into the corner, did not want to get touched. Oh, that's fascinating yeah and so like all this this kind of behavioral change happened immediately it used to be like a really happy you know light-hearted kid like a you know infant was like very smiley and, and laughing and stuff so anyways the you know so our our little like personal theory was that like you know because they handled this with all these like infants and all that like you know who knows like later on what kind of human being that created that's interesting it's an interesting theory you know that the, the soviets did some pretty crazy experiments that you could never you would never want to replicate because they were just terrible but they did some where they would take you know orphans or, or babies yeah then they do the triplet thing where they separate them and they put one of them through like a shitty household they put one of them through they did that here oh, that like, was an american oh, that was an american study oh I can't really believe, i can't yeah, believe remember that no i thought that was a soviet no that was, that was here that was here in they the, took the they, they in took, the 70s they took uh, it was it was twins or triplets triplets yeah they triplet. were triplet they were triplet orphans yeah. and they and it was a, they they put one of them in a wealthy household one of them in a middle class household That's and right. one of them in a poor household that was here that was and they didn't even let them know the triplets never knew that they were triplets and they ended up finding out later on in their late teens that they had brothers that looked exactly oh, that's on Netflix mm. that's a show on Netflix yeah I have seen that and and the three of them you remember they were separated from their their parents their orphan yeah I've seen uh, that's three actually identical tra uh, strangers it's a really good movie super good they were separated from their real parents as infants and that does studies show that that does create some issues so mm. all of them all three of them had a tendency tendency towards depression but the one whose parents whose dad was you know super overbearing not very loving committed suicide mm. so out of the three one of them committed suicide so they, they could clearly see the influence wow. of wow. but the soviets did studies where they would take babies and half of the babies they would tell nurses you know feed them change their diapers but don't hold them don't cuddle with them don't play with them and then the other half they said you know do your normal stuff mm -hmm. what a terrible study and they found that the half that weren't played with cuddle whatever they, they they failed to thrive. They grew up with 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 all kinds of issues and disorders. Really wow. terrible, terrible wow. stuff. So that stuff and it, what happens is it influences the way your your brain and your nervous system develop at that early age. So well, of course you 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 know that between the ages of five and seven, the, the greatest pathways are being cemented at that mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. I think about that at five and seven, you just think because the kid is not bare, they're barely having a semi conversation at that point. So a lot of parents don't even think about that. That's why I'm so careful about. Yeah my words and the things that I say around even my son now I try to put that practice in right. place because when he starts hitting that three four five age I mean he is just a sponge mm -hmm. and they don't know how to interpret or what's right what's wrong I mean it just it cements that as a pathway and then they we react as they get older I mean you learn fundamental um like you learn these like hardwired behaviors for so like, sure if you learn to like 
uh, ignore or cut something out because it's too scary or too frightening, then that can become a, a behavior that you well, end up I, having. As I remember adult. going yeah. through therapy and taking a, uh, having a really hard time. I've talked about this, uh, I think, once or twice on the show before, and I know you guys know this. Like, I, I uh, admit that I'm like I'm the worst person to give a gift to. Like just, yeah. ju- I'm just you don't accept gifts very well. I second. I'm just I'm terrible at accepting gifts, and it's not because I don't like things. I mean, I like I like things. I buy mm-hmm. things all the time. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't I like things from someone else? Yeah. It's free, right? Yeah, you it, are it, you are a bit of a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but really though, uh, it caused a lot of issues in relationships that I had through my teenage and early twenties, and it took a, a therapy and a lot of like self uh, reflection to kind of unpack and figure that out. And what that is from, it goes all the way back to when I was, you know, seven, eight, nine years old. And, you know, this was seven, eight, nine, ten were some of the harder years for me as a kid. That was after my right after my dad's suicide. My mom remarries within a, less than a year. She was already remarried into an abusive relationship. And part of what caused a lot of the turmoil in our house uh, was always money issues. We didn't have, we, mm-hmm. we had it for a little bit, then we didn't have it. And also, of course, what would you think are the, some of the hardest times for a family during that time? Anybody who's had a re- similar childhood could probably relate. Birthdays and holidays. Birthdays and holidays where you're supposed to buy cake and oh, buy gifts yeah. and buy stuff. Lots of pressure. It would put a lot of pressure on my mom and dad, and then they would turn into these massive fights. And then a lot of times, I didn't get anything. Or mm. I'd get a check in the mail from my grandmother for my birthday, and my mom would need to use it for food. Mm. So you do that now as a seven, eight, nine year old. I was angry. I was bitter. Ugh. And then by 10, 11, 12, then it becomes something that it's just, it's, this is common. This is normal for me. Mm. So then eventually, as a kid, you shut that emotion off mm. yeah. to be excited. I'm not going to be excited about my birthday. Yeah, Who knows? Be let down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. then I become numb to receiving anything because I may not get anything, or I may even get something taken away during that time. Mm-hmm. And then you fast forward 10, 15 years. Now I'm a grown up. That shit's way long gone. Yeah. I have a, a, a beautiful girlfriend at the time, and she wants to shower me with a really nice gift. And I go, "Oh, cool, thanks." You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I have, and I, and I, and it, and it doesn't matter how did, much. Did you, would they, would they, they would probably get upset. Cause they oh, understand. totally, totally. Because yeah. I and. and I can't even, and you know me, right? I'm so, I'm as, I'm me. I'm 100% me. Right. I can't fake, I can't fake things. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't go with my, mm-hmm. my, my integrity and who I am. And so I would know that it was coming, you know, after a while in my twenties, I would be talking with, you know, and knowing my birthday's coming, I'm going to get a gift. And I'd be thinking about it. Like I got to fucking, yeah. you know, <gasps> yeah. Oh like, my God. This was <laughs> be like practice in front of the mirror. Oh, I, I, I bro, this is Thank real, you. real talk. You know, and I don't, I haven't shared this much with people, but I absolutely would have these, you know, when, when I'm self-aware enough to, to know it was a problem and I had enough people tell me I'm terrible at it. It caused issues. That I would, I'd, I'd have like to I'd coach myself up. Okay, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna get a gift tomorrow, yeah. Adam, and you're gonna you're gonna like <laughs> you, it. You just gotta it's hug like, them right yeah. away so they don't see you. And That's then it happens, and it's like it's like the most awkward feeling. It comes it's, out fake. Maybe. Yeah, you're faking it. Yeah, it's, it's fake yeah. because yeah. I have already trained myself for so many years to be hard about it and to be numb about it. That it and and it can be you. Now, can, are you better when someone gives you a gift when it's not on your birthday? Is that change it because you? Mm. It's nothing that you're expe- like. Okay, my birthday's coming up. Christmas coming up. Or they is- did something specifically with you in mind, just randomly. Yeah, like if someone did it on a random day, yeah. that's would a, you respond differently? That's a good question. If I go back and because Katrina is good at doing stuff like that, she's really good at like just randomly, you know, bringing me home like a shirt or something that she found or. So let me think about that. I don't, you know, honestly, it's, I'm still shitty. You mm. know, what I'm saying I'm mm-hmm. still terrible. I'm still not good at just getting any. You can, so this is this started. This is a trend that I started. Like God, this was like. 10 plus years ago, uh, both in my family and with clients is I would tell people, uh, please, if you're going to get something for my birthday, please get me things like toilet paper, toothpaste, stuff that I know that I'm going to use. And I felt why I did that was because I felt like they didn't feel like they put a lot of thought into it. So they didn't feel like it was really special. It's shit I need anyways. And you don't feel bad about being and, like, and then oh. I don't feel bad. About, oh, cool. Rolls of toilet paper. Thank you. So that <laughs> wow. was like the big yeah. joke in my family like yeah. that my, and my sister was great about it. Every year for Christmas, I got this, she would, and she would be decorative with it. She'd make a cake out of toilet paper <laughs> and she'd wrap it all up. I love my sister. Right. So she would do things like that. Wow. Uh, because she knew, and, and it was the truth. That's what I wanted. Like, I'm like, I, at that time, I was already making enough money that I could buy the things I wanted for me. Yeah. So I didn't want people to try and get me something like that. But isn't that weird how it becomes so hardwired? Uh-huh. And even though you're aware of it, it's because it's hardwired that you, you just have to knowing being aware of it is is the is the good part. The the hard part, yeah. changing it almost impossible. It's like it's not going to change. So oh, I'm I'm almost forty years old and it still work. 
Yeah. It's still hard as shit yeah, to this day. Weird. I mean, thank God. You know, and the, and the reason why Katrina and I work and it hasn't ruined our relationship is because I by thirty I was already so aware of it. So you warn her. I, yeah, yeah, you communicate. You say, "Hey, listen," and then I express what had you know. This is who I am, and I am very grateful for anything you get me, and I appreciate the thought and just. But, but it's not going to come across that way. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and she does. She, I, I remember the first, the very first. It was our first New Year's. Was the first gift she ever got for me. It was. We were barely. We'd only been together for a few months, and she bought me a freaking. You know, platinum uh, Tiffany's dog tag. I mean, Jeez. I think probably a five hundred dollar necklace, and we just started dating or like that. <clears throat> and she gave it to me, and I was like, "Oh, cool!" You know, <laughs> and she was like traumatized by it afterwards. She's like, oh, no. "She was, that was like one of the nicest gifts that I've ever got." So, like, I told you, I know, that's, I told you that's I, how I'd react. I know, uh, I know, so. Yeah, if it's it's weird. for me, it's so hard to ask for help. It's so hard, yeah. and I couldn't, and I never understood me why. Too. And I think it's because uh, I, I was the oldest of four. I was always told to be the leader, to 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 you know help your siblings, to be strong for them, mm -hmm. watch out for them in school, do this and that. And so I never learned how to uh, be vulnerable. I never learned how to ask for help. And it's to this day, it is so hard. Like if I'm sad or depressed or whatever, I'm good at with my words because that's what I've learned. Like you, Adam, I've learned. I'm self-aware enough to know that I should verbalize it, but you can't tell otherwise. Right. So Jessica will be like, well, I know you're telling me that you're feeling a particular way, but I can't feel it. It doesn't make any sense. She's like, I hear your words. I'm like, listen, trust my oh, words. No, I'm just now getting good at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I used to just bury that shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, terrible about that. And it was really as a competitive thing for me Oh yeah. because of my brother. You know, it's like he was... He was always like so smart and like, you know, got good grades and like did everything like by the book and all this. And I was always like trying to, you know, carve my own way. And like, you know, I just didn't agree with anything he was doing. And so I would try and do like the opposite, you know. And so it was just like one of those things. I don't want help. I just want to do my own thing. Oh, you gosh. know, you know, it's uh, to, to bring this back around to like COVID and what's going on right now. I think this is happening a lot right now because a lot of people are having to be inside of themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because you're forced. Yeah, you're forced to. And so and we're seeing we're seeing two sides of this. Yep. We're seeing uh the unfortunate side, rise of depression, rise of suicide, spousal abuse, child abuse, uh, alcohol consumption. So that to me, those are the people that uh can't handle yeah. seeing themselves or dealing with themselves. They need and so, to numb reality. Right. So then they either numb it or they express it in a in a bad way. Mm -hmm. And so and then you have the other half that's happening right now. So that's the good that's happening right now. And it'd be very it's gonna be very interesting as a as a uh, as a whole, you know, society, how we come out of this situation, because I am still getting good stories and and conversations with people that are connected to me that are talking about what we're talking about right now. That you know, this has caused a lot of self reflection mm -hmm. on the way you communicate to your kids, the way you communicate to your partner, what you took for granted. What you, That's the biggest. One. What you took for granted, yes. the way you handle your finances, the th the way you've projected things just for for other people, because now none of those people matter because you're not even seeing them or talking to them anymore. You're all it's all about you and the things that you well, choose to do. Well, dude, look at uh, generations are are often defined by the, how they handle the toughest things that happen during those generations, like. You go back, what, what they often refer to as the greatest generation. This was the generation that, that fought in World War II mm -hmm. and then came back. And then we had an explosion of families. People came back from war. The boomers. And they, they saw death. They faced it. It was like, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. We, we dropped nukes yeah. on another country. Then the war is over, and you have a bunch of people having lots of kids, being yep. very productive, you know, uh, valuing family. And that's why it's often, it's not perfect, by the way. Every generation's got their shit, but that's, I, and so we're going to be defined, unless something worse happens, which not, I don't, hope not, right? Uh, we're going to be defined by how we emerge out of this. And you know what? You, you know, you're right. You, you don't grow when you feel comfortable. You never grow when you feel comfortable. You only grow when you're uncomfortable and things are hard. And so, this is our opportunity to show how we come out of it and how we grow. You know, sure. you know Justin, you brought up Netflix, and I have to say this because I've been meaning to. I've got a bone to pick with Mon with Netflix now. Uh oh. Uh, so you remember I brought this up, I think uh, a while ago, that um, I noticed that Netflix was ranking uh, the shows like that are trending, oh, yeah. the, the, the trending artists, which I thought like was top ten in the country. Right. Yeah, but... I thought this was so brilliant when they released it a couple months ago, and uh, man, I found some really good movies and shows because of that. Completely fucked now. 
Why? <laughs> the teenagers <laughs> have fucked the algorithm. Oh, wait, man. wait. So because like more than fifty percent, it's because of all these. And this is what I. This is my theory. Because of all these kids are not in school right now. They're all home, so they're uh, all binging TV. So you know the adults probably. If you're in your, if you're like our age, you you get to watch a show or maybe two if you're lucky, uh, unless it's a really weird binge night or something for you. But on average, you probably only get enough time to probably watch one or two shows. But if you're a teenager. And you're home with no school right now. You're watching fucking 14 shows in a row, which is screwing the algorithm up. No, I think you're right, dude. Because uh, you know that one that one documentary you just uh, told me about the other day. I had no idea it was even in there. Yeah. And you know, like there's, I guarantee there's a lot of gems in there that I don't even get presented because these algorithms are like so far, so, like from what I'm actually sausage wanting to watch. party number one movie yeah. in the country. Like, huh? No, yeah. the way I'm, I'm like, so I've I've been sucked in like for two or three three different of these ranked top five right now trending and it's such a stupid teeny bopper fucking show <laughs> you like such oh, like, man. oh my god like there's a there's the one right now that it, it kept popping up in my feed and it's the um it's the football one all american and it actually the preview of it looks really good and it's not but, horrible but they're horrible. vampires you know yeah. but it, it's so <laughs> it's high school drama you know, like the yeah. I, I, it got me to watch it because I was like, oh, a football player and he's all American. It's based on a true story. Okay, this is cool, but it's the whole show is around high school drama. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it just, you know what's happening right now because you just made me think of something. So I've been reading article. So this has been happening to me. So let me know if you guys have noticed. Anything. Have you guys noticed that you've been having more vivid dreams that you remember, or have you noticed any disruptions to your sleep? Um, I've been actually getting a little bit better sleep. Yeah, so, deeper sleep. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I've I, had I haven't had sleep for almost nine months. Well, so. yeah, you're talking <laughs> the wrong crowd right, here. Sorry dude. about that. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, apparently more and more people are reporting uh, challenges with sleep and reporting more vivid uh, type dreams, and they're relating hmm. it to stress. They're relating it to the fact oh, that well, things yeah. are changing. But they're but they're also this is my theory. I think more people because they're off schedule. Um, are doing like what you're saying, Adam, where they're watching more movies, more yeah. Netflix, and they're watching it all the way up until they yeah. go to sleep. I was actually wondering about the statistics for that in terms of screen time and in terms of like everybody watching iPads to the TV, kind of going from phone to like each one of those electronic devices. Because I started to see a trend in my own household of when I would get home and like the kids are on the iPads, but they're justifying it because they have to do schoolwork. Yeah. And, they, and then they, from then, you know, now they want to do the game after they're, they're done. And I'm like, no, like let's get get rid of these and i only got those because now we're in a situation where they're doing virtual classes so it mm -hmm. makes sense uh but then i'm like oh my god they, they need to be wearing their glasses and and you know th this is something that I'd, i like I, I i was good about it when they're watching tv but i didn't even like think to to also have them wear their glasses uh these felix gray glasses when they're on the ipads too because it was just like oh it's probably so worse so much yeah the iPad's so much worse well my kids, time they're on there my kids school actually recommended uh, to the, all the students to wear uh, blue light. No blocking. way. Yeah, they did. Yes. No way. Smart, yeah, it's, smart it's, school. It's probably going to be something. That, I believe this. Yeah. I believe that you're, and I think we're already seeing it because I know that Felix Cray has partnered with like Apple and Google and some of mm -hmm. these big companies. I think that the, as more and more research continues to come out about the strain that it puts on your eyes, yep. that, that it'll be it'll be just like safety glasses. You see the way you see when people are in doing construction. Yeah, in construction. Yep. Like, I mean, how often does someone get their eyes shot out with a nail gun or something? Very rarely, well, but enough right. for them to mandatory make Dude, that a, a thing you have to behaviorally, do. Behaviorally, I can 100% uh, verify that their behavior is different when they're either wearing them and then like transitioning off of them, or they're not wearing them yep. and then they're trying. It, it's like it, it's like they turn into these like chimps. They're just blah. Yeah, so, you know if I rip so them off. I ran a little uh, self experiment, not even unknown. I have not worn blue light blocking glasses at night now for probably four, maybe four weeks since all this went down. And to be quite honest, it's because I just forgot. I think everything that's going on right now, I didn't think grab my blue light blocking glasses when I'm watching, you know, late night TV or whatever, right before bed. Yeah. La uh, two nights ago, totally remembered. I'm like, why am I not wearing these? So I started wearing them. Huge difference. Yep. Huge difference in my sleep. And it, the only reason why I can tell the massive difference is because I went from wearing them to not wearing them 
to wearing them again. So I think you forget when you're on them consistently Definitely. that they make that big of an impact. You know, Justin, you, speaking of education, did you guys see what uh, Jason Phillips is doing this month? No. What? So he's got his, and I talked to him when he was building this out. Like so, and he didn't uh, like a month or two ago. He was telling me like, oh, he's building out this whole like course on how to basically build a coaching business, hmm. uh, which we get questions a lot. We have a lot of trainers, and especially right now because of the time everyone's now home. Mm -hmm. And if you are a trainer working in a gym, this is obviously a, a tough time for you. And so we've had a lot of like, you know, virtual coaching questions. And so he was going to put together, uh, I thought originally it was going to be this really expensive like course or webinar, but he's doing it for $1.99. For wow. our mind pump listeners, Look at yeah. That. What is he teaching? So it's a, it's a whole course on him build how to build. Uh, it's a, it's called coaching secrets, you know, for how to scale your business as a trainer with virtual coaching. That's smart. So the business end of his yes. nutritional coaching. He basically lays out how he scaled from a you know in a three month time from zero to six figures and then from six figures to seven figures the pathway of smart. Well, yeah, it is coaching. smart. I mean, especially if you're like a tra even a trainer that's just focused on fitness to be able to you know enhance your offerings and have that as, as another addition you know for for revenue. Like I think especially now like any kind of virtual option is going to be. It's a good smart thing. because you know he's what he's doing is. He's he's giving people the opportunity to see how good his stuff is for almost nothing. That's what I so that, that was the point I was trying to make. That what I've what I've loved about working with Jason so far is that it's every, smart business. Yeah, it's good service. Is, almost everything he's done has been almost free for mind pump people. So he's done a ton of great free coaching that's extremely valuable that most people are selling online as ebooks. He's done for free, and then something like this that is of ex extreme value. For a dollar ninety nine. I mean, yeah. at that point, I understand that too, because to me, I want I want serious people, like not to waste waste my time or waste the time I'm doing it, because he's got a lot of cool stuff that's attached to that right, too. Right. Hey, uh, I want to share this before I forget. So, there's a site that you can go on. I think it's called World. I think it's called World Health Meter or something like that online, and they actually track and measure uh, the U.S.'s in, uh, reported infections and death rate, and so they have graphs and stuff, and you can see if the if the curve is flattening, if it's going down. And it has actually now for a little while now look like it's starting to flatten and curve down, right? But today we got the highest reported number of deaths that we've had ever. So everybody's freaking out. And and the, and the news articles literally say hmm. highest number, record in number. In all of the U.S. or in a it, specific so far, area? So far in the U.S., okay. right? And, and the, the headlines all say highest you know, record number of deaths in a single day. Here's what they don't fucking tell you. It's because New York went back through past days and has added presumed COVID deaths that never tested positive. So oh, all, shut that's up. True story. That's dirty. So no all they, and it's not that it's dirty. It, the media is dirty. It's that that's what they have to do. So if they go back and they say, you know what? These people probably died of COVID even though they never tested positive. Speculative, yeah. And this is over Data. the past, this is all over the past like few days. Then they take all those numbers Add it to today. So the reason why hmm. we're seeing a record number of deaths is not because a bunch of new people died. It's because a bunch of people that died before that didn't get counted right. are getting counted all on one day. Oh, okay. my God. And it just is the kind of stuff that really infuriates me because yeah. I'm, I'm going through all these articles and I'm looking at it and that's what they're saying. They're you saying, want to give people hope right now, you know? Like well, to, to do, I don't know. Just be honest, you know? Yeah. I, I'm reading all these uh, articles and they're saying, again, you know, record number of deaths in the U.S., you know, deaths spike up after, you know, days of flattening and this and that. Then I'm, I'm digging deeper, digging deeper, and then I see New York City posts sharp spike in coronavirus deaths after untested victims are added. So that's why we saw hmm. a big, and this is what it says here. It says they marked a staggering increase of 3,700 deaths formally, that were now formally attributed to COVID. So it's a 60% spike. That came from all those those past deaths. So, oh so yeah, do your do your reading, uh, everybody. You know, look for yourself. It's not uh, the scary thing that a lot of these you know headlines uh, you know are showing necessarily. So, mm. uh, more interesting news. Did you guys hear that China is uh, going to be starting to censor research around COVID? What? No. Yeah. So now, if you're if you're in China and you're researching COVID. They're going to censor the information. It has to go through them before you can... Now, what's the purpose of that? I think they're going to try to... If information makes them look bad, they're probably going to... That's what it is. ...cut it out. You know, yeah. They want to make sure that they look they look good each time. Yeah, come on. That's like, annoying. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah, super, super annoying. First question is from official Bruce Love. I recently came upon a post where a trainer said you should never go ass to grass on squats or even 90 degrees. 
and that it has no benefit physically or aesthetically. What are your thoughts on this claim? Oh, he's talking yeah. about that one knucklehead. Is he? Yeah, he has to be talking about I that. I love movie. absolutes, right? Yeah. Isn't that great? Okay, no. so here, so this is flat out, here's the truth, okay? Uh, your If you have good mobility, stability, and control, then a larger range of motion with those things, those prerequisites, prerequisites right? A larger range of motion, this has been proven time and time again, builds more muscle, and it builds more total strength. Fact. Done. Okay, yeah. so who should not squat ass to grass? Who should who should not squat past ninety degrees? The person who lacks the stability and control to do so. Right. That's the person that should not do that. Or, so, or somebody training sports specific. That's the other. Oh, sure. That's the other. There's the other. Sure, sure. There's two. There's two people that you see. And then, Good point. And and those are the people that you should see not squatting deeper than ninety degrees. Either one, like you said, like if it's a specific application to sports. Yeah, like a basketball that. player. A basketball yeah. player training quarter squats makes a lot of sense because when he springs up to dunk the mm -hmm. basketball, he doesn't go past ninety degrees in his squat to shoot up above. No. So he wants to be. It's a very specific. It's all on how you generate power, and in that sport, it's not all the way down. You know, below ninety degrees. Right. right so right. so for for a specific application like that that makes sense or if somebody is, ha, is has limited range of motion due to either injury or poor mobility and they can't go beyond that without their form breaking down tremendously then absolutely they shouldn't but that person who you know absolutely shouldn't should work towards that yes by working on mobility and addressing the reason why they can't go 90 the yeah. joint your joints were designed to do that right if you've ever done this some people a lot of people have experienced this i did with uh bicep training i did it with back training where as a kid you know working out you know, you're, you're, there, there's a lot of ego, especially as a young male, right? There's a lot of ego surrounding your lifts. Mm -hmm. And so rather than doing, uh, I'll give you a, a silly one, right? Rather than doing like full extension preacher curls, which is a silly exercise, right? But without, I used to stop just short of full extension because I could handle way more weight. And, you know, when you're 16, 17 years old, that's all that matters. And so that's how I did curls. Well, when I was 18 years old or so, I remember talking to uh, a, a fellow trainer because I first became a trainer. He had amazing arms, and he told me, no, nah, bro, go all the way down. Go lighter. Don't worry about how much weight you use. Go all the way down and watch what happens. And I added like a half an inch to my arms from going just a little bit deeper. I noticed this with my shoulders. noticed this with my back. So if you can't do a full squat because of lack of mobility, don't force yourself to do the full squat, but definitely work on mobility so that you can. This is why... Uh, our program, like Maps Prime Pro, for example, this is why a lot of people are finding a lot of value in it. It's, it's, yes, it does prevent injury, makes things feel better, but the people who are using it consistently, here's what I'm getting from them. I followed your program, Maps Prime Pro. I did it diligently. Now my squat is below 90 degrees, and I can do it with good mobility. And now I've actually built more muscle. My legs look better. My glutes look better because I can, I can maximize the potential. Of this exercise because of better mobility. Oh, I'm well, getting I'm getting that, or I'm getting people saying that there's no bursitis in their hips, like I yes. I was suffering for, or people that were that didn't squat because they had low back issues, and it was all related to the hip complex. Now right. they're doing that, so their back doesn't hurt when they squat. That's why, yeah, that's why this message always irritates me because it's it it's the easier way to cater to what the client wants to hear. You know, like they're they're just catering to, well, you can make gains and you don't have to struggle and go, you know, really work on your mobility and try and like press yourself to be better and, and, and see if you can, you know, gain more access and ability that your body, uh, you know, has. Like, it, like you're not going to unlock all the potential you potentially could, you know, achieve by by going through this this laborious process of like, trying to gain mobility. And you have to do this by doing the arduous types of exercise like the mobility drills and all these things like people don't want to do that so let's not talk about that you yeah, know yeah. let's just give you the uh you could just go 90 you can get some good gains from this and but now you're like limiting your abilities you're you're you know long term you're setting yourself up for restriction in movement which then you know causes pain and arthritis and all that so th this can just jump off a cliff <laughs> a, compl a complete transparency this was me Early on in my career, this is how all of us learned early on. Yeah, early on, uh, when we when I got my first few certifications, um, all of them. In fact, I'm trying to remember the first certification that actually even you know what it was. It was Nesta was the first one, to, and I remember it caused all kinds of shit amongst my trainers and us. It was the Nesta was the first certification that uh, I took that actually advocated for 
ass to grass squatting and working towards that. All the certifications before that that I had, uh, NCSF, NASM, IFPA. Uh, what else did I have? Bro, they didn't even recommend bench pressing to, down to your yeah, chest. They they all I know. they all in the elbows. Yes, they they, they done, all recommended dead. down yeah. to ninety degrees. And I un now later on in my career, it's all come full circle for me, and I, I understand why as a certification that is teaching trainers that are going to teach millions of people while they did it. It's a safety precaution. Yeah, they can if, standardize it that way. That's right. If we can if we can standardize it and we know that you know ninety nine pro percent of the population should be able to at least get down to ninety degrees safely. And at least bring their the bench press bar down to ninety degrees safely without injuring their shoulder. This is how we're going to teach our coaches because it's safer, safer, you know, for the masses. But the reality is, it's not better for the masses. Right. What's better for the masses is for them to recognize that, hey, I don't have good form past ninety degrees because mm. there's a breakdown and I have deficiencies because I've lost good range of motion in the, my joints that should have that range of motion. And so let's work towards that. And here's the thing. What I didn't know as a young trainer was I was doing more harm than good by shortening everybody's range up for safety reasons because what all you end up doing is tightening them up more and building more muscle and you for sure lose that range of motion that you would like to gain with them. And what that ends up doing is the body overcompensates when you move and you end up causing chronic pain in other places. Now you are now you get the bursitis in the hips. Now you get the low back pain. Mm -hmm. Now you get the neck pain going on. Now you got the nagging shoulder stuff because you never addressed – the mobility. Here, here. Okay, here's a uh, the truth, and it's uh, so for some people. I'm sure it's going to be controversial. Okay, there really are no inherently dangerous exercises. Now, exercises come with risk potential. Some exercises have a higher mm -hmm. risk potential and because there are prerequisites. Beca right, because they require more skill. Yeah. They require more control. They require better, greater mobility. But there are no real inherently dangerous traditional resistance training exercises what makes them dangerous is your your inability to do them properly what makes them dangerous is your lack of control stability mobility but if you do an exercise and i really don't care what it is i don't care i don't care what exercise it is pick the the craziest looking exercise that that actually exists don't just make something up but mm. pick the craziest looking exercise if an individual can the julie michaels peek through the window kettlebell swing. yeah now if you if if an extra if a person can do the movement with good control good mobility, good stability, that exercise is safe. So this goes for all of them, not just ass to grass squats. Next question is from year 95 kiddo. What are some things I can do to stay disciplined and motivated to work out at home? I've gotten so bad that my husband started calling it naps anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dude, hey, so, so so real talk here, right? So there's a thread in our private forum Oops. right now. I'm glad you went to this. Church. And, you know, someone's like, man, I am, I'm basically people are on their venting how they're just, they're, they're cracking at the seams, you know, a, a, a fitness, dude, yes. fitness enthusiasts. First off, I'm sure a lot of people are feeling this way, but if you're a fitness enthusiast, you have a wonderful mechanism to deal with stress. You've probably done it for years. It helps you deal with anxiety. You feel healthy so you can handle things differently. And for a lot of people, it's been taken away because they can't go to the gym. Right. So now they have to do it at home. Totally different environment. Very different challenge. Maybe not as motivating for the person. Maybe they just feel like, oh, this is a bad substitute. So I totally can relate to how difficult it is right now. This now on the podcast, we've talked many times about the difference between motivation and discipline. Motivation comes and goes, circumstances definitely affect it. Sometimes they're internal circumstances, sometimes they're external circumstances. And when we're motivated, nobody needs to convince us to exercise, nobody convinces us to eat right. We're just, it's easy because we feel it. But sometimes, and all of us go through this, motivation goes away. And this is where discipline comes to play and discipline is hard motivation is easy and so my advice to people in this situation is number one accept that it sucks mm. accept it okay what's the next step now i'll tell you what i've been doing i have an alarm on my phone that goes off every single day 7 40 mo family mobility time now why do i set that alarm because at 7 40 at night i'm many times unmotivated to gather the kids you know, move the couch and everything, get on the carpet. We're all going to do mobility together. I, I just don't want to do it. I, maybe I'm in the middle of watching TV. I finished writing a blog for the company. I'm whatever. I don't want to do it. But the alarm goes off. And what that alarm does is it reminds me to stay disciplined. So now I have to ignore the call. 
So it's one extra thing that reminds me like, okay. And you know what? Sometimes I get up and I'm like, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. But I do it. I keep doing it. I don't want to do it. But then I do it. And you know what ends up happening when you do this consistently? It gets easier. It gets easier. I don't necessarily feel more motivation. It just gets easier to be disciplined when I'm not motivated. So I, I hate to say that that's the answer. Uh, because it's not an easy like hack or trick, but it is. That's really the only answer. Did you? I'm going to go a different direction with this. Did you see my response on that thread? No, chance? I didn't. Okay, so I, I responded later on that on that thread that you're talking about, and I went a different direction. And and uh, everything that Sal said, I agree with. Um, but uh, and this is totally not favorable for this company. In fact, uh, you know, we haven't really talked much about this, but. If it wasn't for us creating Maps Anywhere four years ago, um, we probably would have had to furlough some of our employees. We wouldn't have been able to keep the business operating going. It would have been very challenging for us. But luckily, we were blessed. We created a program that literally fit the needs of tons of people in this situation. And so it's it helped keep us alive during a time when I think everybody is struggling. Now, that being said, what I'm going to say it doesn't support our business whatsoever. Um, but it is what I re replied to this person on this forum. Uh, I told them that, you know, I too have, have felt this right now. I love the gym. I like, we have our own little private gym here and I prefer to go where there's people lifting and grunting and sweating and music pumping and great physiques walking around. It just, it helps me stay focused and push through my workouts. And it's, it, it's te the guy I was complaining to who wrote this in the forum, you know, that that's kind of been his sanctuary and you know, home is home. And mm -hmm. the the two of them blending together is really not making him feel like he's being able to detach from all the home stuff. So I can totally relate to this. <clears throat> and my response is this. Um, I'm not following any program right now. I'm not following our maps anywhere. Although I did a maps anywhere workout the other day, I'm not following our program to a T right now. I'm playing. And, and that's my attitude. One day I might bike ride. One day I may row. One day I may do bench press the entire hour and just work on my mechanics. One day I'll do an hour of intense mobility work. Mm. I might swing the clubs around, try and get good like Justin. I'm not putting this pressure on myself that I can't lose muscle. I got to make gains. I need to maintain. I mean, Maps Anywhere, that's why it was designed. It was designed so you could go and train at home and see fucking results. That's a, it's an amazing program. But the reality is if you if it's starting to mess with your mental space like this because you're putting all the pressure around, you know, needing to keep training a certain way to maintain or to see results, it's like, you know, for me, this is not that time. This time for me is like, hey, I recognize that I am trapped in my house way mm -hmm. more than I've ever been. I recognize that I'm probably not going to get to go to my sanctuary gym and stuff like that. I'm not going to worry so much about it, but I do know, smart enough to understand calories in versus calories out, that I could really easily start to creep up and put a lot of body fat on if I don't stay active and make good choices. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing right now. I'm playing with no rhyme or reason, with no structure, no real... This, this is why I'm doing this. I just go where my heart leads me. And sometimes that is, hey, hun, let's go over and, and get the bikes out and let's just go for a two-hour ride on flat ground and just look at the scenery and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Or it might be, I'm going to go down to my garage and just rip the rower and see what I can get the freaking watts up to. Or it might be, you know what, man, I've been meaning to get better at those Indian clubs and Justin's so good at it. I want to get good at it. And he's got great shoulder mobility. I need to do that. My shoulder's bothering me. And so I do that for a whole hour. Mm -hmm. Like, so great, st great advice. Stop yeah. no, putting, good. stop putting so much pressure on yourself that we need to be making gains or we need to be cautious that we might lose muscle right now. Yes, we have the shit, the program for you out there. But right now, you know what? It's more, I think your mental health takes the front seat on all this and find things that you just like to do. No, it's great because I, I think, you know, a lot of it too is like you get this this insecurity you're not being productive. Like I get this all the time. Oh, like, yeah. You know, if I'm at home and, and something's not getting accomplished, like so I've, I've been torn between a workout or, you know, improving something on the house. And it's like you can't always have that energy. You just can't always have the energy carrying uh, with you because then you start – uh, you know, interacting with your kids, with, with your, your spouse, like, and, the, and then you get short and then, and then you get frustrated and then you get irritated and all these things kind of stack up on you. And, and to, to kind of break free of that for a bit is necessary sometimes. And, and, but also having like a foundation you can come back to is how I kind of look at it. So I, I do have 
like a solid workout. I, I've tried to accomplish at least three times, you know, during the week, but uh, I'm, I'm playing as well. I think that's great advice. I, I'm going outside. I'm, I'm grabbing unconventional equipment. I'm, I'm taking my kids on hikes. I'm, I'm trying to go where I'm allowed, you know, which mm -hmm. is really hard for me because our, our family is, is definitely, this is something I've learned from, from this whole lockdown thing. We are so much of a family that is on the move and, and active and, and out. Like we don't stay at home very often. And so this has completely changed our dynamic and to try and figure that out. It's a, it's a tough thing and, and, and we're all trying to adjust. And so I can, I could totally, you know, feel from where you're coming from in terms of the frustration of it. And I do think, yes, allow yourself uh, to sort of break free. Sometimes it'll help your mental state. Well, you know, the, one of the big problems is you, you, we tend to compare our worst selves to our best selves. We tend to compare, hmm. we're on lockdown. We have no access to a gym. It's a little scary and uncertain right now. And so now I'm going to compare my activity levels and my diet in this situation to how my activities and diet was when none of that shit was happening before. So not fair. Totally different. So not fair. You're in a different situation now. It's harder. Um, I think you're probably doing okay, all things being considered. Do not compare yourself to yourself at your best when none of this shit was happening. It's so unfair at yourself. You wouldn't do this with anyone else. Don't do it with yourself. Next question is from OG Quarantine. <laughs> I am currently averaging about 3,000 steps during lockdown. How would you recommend not seizing up and maintaining or improving mobility during this time? Oh, man. Mobility movements, the best ones that you could mm. do, don't require equipment or a lot of space. If you have a floor that you can sit on, um, you have enough space to do most of the good mobility movements. Mm -hmm. So one way I would recommend doing this is divide your day up into two or three segments and, and devote 10, 15, 20 minutes if you want to get aggressive at a time on just working on mobility movements. There's a lot of great ones, by the way, on our, our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. If you just type in mobility or you type in priming, You'll see a array of shoulder and hip and ankle and you know back mobility movements that you could just practice you know throughout the day. I, I got something better for you even I, we uh, and we've been working on doing this for a while and actually this quarantine thing uh, gave us the opportunity to do something like this because I had the time. Uh, Doug and I put together a, a webinar around mobility. So it's, oh, that's great. I take yeah. you through a, a an entire class. Um, it's structured on how you would build a, a mobility routine to help fight chronic pain. So what movements uh, that I chose to put in this in this webinar were movements that I think have helped my clients the most over years with things like squat depth, with hip pain, with low back pain, with just overall mobility. And it's literally a head to toe type of thing. And I take you through the class. So that's going to be going next week. You can go to the landing page where you can register for the time. It's free. It's completely free. Um, it's about an hour long. You want to slot that time for it, but you can go to the map, the mindpumpwebinar.com. So if you go to yeah. mindpumpwebinar.com, you register for it. Uh, there'll be a live chat to where, you know, Sal, Justin, or I will be on there talking to people that have questions or don't know what's going on or what like that, that you can watch, but make sure you register on there for one of the times that you're, you're, yeah. you're available. And it's, it's, it's a full on class that you're teaching. It's a full oh, yeah. on, it's yeah, a, you're, you're like literally taking yeah, people Yeah, if you ever it. wanted to see like, or what it actually feel and experience what a, a true mobility uh, workout feels like like you definitely take them through to where you're sweating you're it's intense and, oh, yeah. and I, I think people like underestimate the fact that you can really uh you know turn that into work so all right next question is from unorthodox fitness me i frequently have issues with tight it bands other than foam rolling i can't seem to find any relief are there any uncommon stretches that work great for stretching them I've seen some of the traditional stretches and have tried them, and they just don't seem to be very effective. You're not you're not fixing the root problem. That's why. So the, the foam roller is temporarily alleviating pain. Even a stretch, uh, like a static stretch, would be a temporary solution for a problem. The reason why your IT bands, the the likely the very likely reason that your IT bands bother you, is because uh, you have issues with mobility likely coming from the hips, but it could also come from the ankles and the feet. And so the IT band is just under more stress than it needs to be. There's some compensations going on. And so you feel 
pain uh, in that area. And the only way you're going to get rid of it permanently is if you solve the actual root cause of the mobility issue in yourself. Um, now, for me, the most effective movement that I've done for IT, so my IT band used to bother me up near my hip. That's where I would start to kind of feel issues. And I would feel it after like heavy, heavy squats. Like I do heavy, you know, squats. And then the next day, the the IT band next to my hip would kind of bother me. In fact, I could like poke it near my hip and it would it would feel tender even to the touch. And then I'd foam roll and do that stuff and it'd feel better. And it just never really went away until I started practicing um, 90-90 positions. And for me, at least, this is just my own personal story, no joke, two or three sessions with uh, you know practicing the 90-90 variations uh, significantly took away my IT band, just two or three sessions, because I think I started firing muscles mm-hmm. a little bit better than when I went to go squat. I didn't notice the same amount of, uh, of pain. So I've got um, two, I'm going to share the two most common things that I see as far as the root cause with Sal saying uh, with clients with this. And then also, again, point this person towards the the mindpumpwebinar.com thing that we're doing. So that uh, the moves that I do in there, like this is this is for you. Uh, for sure, the most common things I see are hip and foot. Um, and foot is the one that I think uh, that is the tricky one that a lot of people don't realize sometimes ends up causing issue in the IT. And the reason why that is is uh, foot flattening is very common. So you pronate, so the, the foot caves in. When the foot caves in like that, it puts strain and stress on the peroneals. The peroneals then pull up on the insertion of the IT. And then when you also pronate, it internally rotates the femur. And that is like, it winds the IT. It almost twists the IT and then it's getting pulled on from all the way down by the foot. And that pulling is where you feel that stress all the way up in the hip or sometimes in the knee. So that's a really common one. So addressing your, your foot strength control and ankle mobility, which I addressed that in the webinar. So we get into, we get into that stuff is something that will help. I have a, a really good YouTube video too, where I address the peroneals and I address it. It's one of the better videos we've done on, I think it's called, uh, it's a knee pain. Maybe Doug can look it up or Jackie can link it to the show notes. Remember at mindpumppodcast.com, uh, we have all the show notes. So anytime we talk about stuff like this, you can always go there and we'll, we'll link all the videos where we talk about this. So that's the, uh, that's, that video does all of this. And then the other one is like what Sal is saying is hips. You know, we, the, the hip is so dynamic. Uh, the hip and the shoulder both are like this where we it just, it can move in all different directions and planes. And unfortunately, as, as we get older, we, we limit that. We don't do that as much anymore. We move in this kind of sagittal plane forward and backwards all the time, but we don't move laterally and transverse and roll around and play like a kid. And so your your body just says, oh, you're not going to use it. I'm going to lose it. And it stops doing that. But yet then you go squat or do something heavy. And those those muscles that were that should be supporting that hip, just they're dormant and they're not strengthened and they're not working properly. And so that ends up putting stress on the ligaments and the joints. And that's where these this pain and IT tightness comes from. And so you, you want to look at those two areas, address it. But again, I, I cover a lot of this. Yeah, it's those movement uh, repetitive patterns that uh, you need to identify to get to that root. And uh, this is something I've, I'm constantly working on this based off of how much I drive specifically. So where my foot position is affects the kinetic chain all the way up into my hip. And so I do feel, you know, my IT talks to me, uh, you know, my performance talks to me, peroneals. Like it, it it's one of those things too, you just have to understand uh, how to create better movement patterns and repeat them as much as possible uh, in, in order to kind of uh, relieve a lot of this 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 tightness, this pain that's inevitably going to creep up when you start doing intense exercises, workouts, all that's where you're really going to see it uh, come back to, to haunt you. Excellent. Um, and you can go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. Also, you can find your three favorite podcast hosts, on Instagram, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Come see me on the webinar.